Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In today's Ruby Snack, we'll be debugging specs and views with pry and better errors. We're continuing the Dev Gems series and talking about all the gems that I include in my Dev and Test Suite, as detailed in the Get Launching series. Today we'll be talking about better errors, pry, pry nav, and pry rails. I'll be sharing two real world examples that I encountered in the last week. So there's not really any coding along this week, so just sit back and enjoy. Pry is a powerful alternative to the standard IRB shell for Ruby. It is written from scratch to provide a number of advanced features. I could do a series of videos on Pry. There is so much to be learned about it and so many ways that you can use it. And in fact, at the end of the video, I'll point you in the direction of a few more videos that people have done in the past. Today, I'm just going to give an overview of a few of the other gems I use with Pry and just one real world example of how to use it in debugging. First, let's take a look at the GitHub page that has lots of great information. It points you in the direction of even more resources for their homepage and for their wiki. So you see a more full explanation of what Pry has to offer, as well as some commands, some navigating commands, some other uh, special features, uh, runtime invocation, as well as uh, shell integration, so much. Uh, the code browsing is a really interesting feature where you can look at your code within the terminal and not have to go back to your text editor. And you can look at it and you can even edit it from the command line, although that will open up the text editor for you. And you can read all about that. There's also a way to add a gist right from your command line. And then some other things as well as a live help system so you can look up any of the commands you want right in the console. And you can use Pry as your Rails console. I'll show you a gem that does that a little bit better. And there you go. Pry Nav teaches Pry about step, next, and continue to create a simple debugger. So while you're in Pry, you can use these commands to go forward and backward in the order of the code. Taking a look at the GitHub page, it's actually suggesting that you use different gems for newer versions of Ruby. So I will probably be trying out that pry by bug in a future video. For now, I will keep pry nav in my gem file. Pry Rails is a small gem which causes Rails console to open pry. So when you simply type in Rails C on your command line, then you get all of the features of pry, which is very handy. Taking a look at the GitHub page, it has that quick description as well as how to install it and some quick usage points. For example, you can see the routes and you can see all the models by using pry instead of regular IRB. Better errors replaces the standard Rails error page with a much better and more useful error page. It is also usable outside of Rails in any Rack app as Rack middleware. You'll see what I mean. Looking at the GitHub page, you'll see a little example of what I'm talking about, something that is laid out in a more usable fashion. And so the page continues to talk about the features and how to install it. And a reminder that you should only put this in the development section. You don't want this error page to come out in production because people can change things, especially if you have binding of collar installed. Now onto our real world examples. For the first one, I'll be using binding pry to stop the app at a certain point to open the view with the capybara method, save and open page, and then use the browser inspector to view the HTML. Last week, as I was preparing for the nested forms episode, I actually ran the spec and came across an error that I didn't show you. So I'll scroll on up and I'll see that, huh, it's not finding that particular fill-in. Let's let's see. Let's go ahead and enter binding pry before it tries to fill in the crew member name. And so when we go back to run the spec again, it will stop the spec right there where we need it to. See so now we have a session of pry. So I'm going to go ahead and save and open page to see the page so that I can inspect it right at this point. So it opens it up and it's what I expect. Great. Now let's, let's see what it's looking for. Let's open and inspect 
and see what is here, what should the test be looking for? And this I find very useful in nested forms especially because it can be a little bit complicated and you're not quite sure what the test should be looking for. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it in and see what I went wrong. Let's see. And I see that actually I had forgotten all important S. It needs to be plural, crew members plural. So I'm gonna take out the binding pry And I'm going to add the S to the other ones. Oh, there's six in total. And again, I recommend this highly in case you're having trouble with the spec that includes nested forms. So we'll run the spec again, and hopefully we will get a new error on our way to solving that spec. Yes, so something new. Now on to our real world example number two in which I will show a little bit more about better errors. So I'll use Rails S to run the app and visit the page where the error is happening. And then better errors will show the error in a very readable format. This time I'll show you a spec from a client that I was working on this week. And we were making a simple contact form, so they'll fill in the form. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and check to see if the CSS is loading correctly. It, design is very important for this particular client, so I'm going to check and make sure that it's there. So in running the spec, I found that it was not finding that CSS, and so I need to investigate further. So I'll go ahead and check back at the HTML that I just integrated. This was provided by a designer, so I integrated this into my form. And so it looks okay, so let's just go ahead and look at the page. I'm gonna go ahead and run Rails S to start up the server so I can see exactly what is happening. And so it's booting up and I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my browser and I know that it's gonna be a contact forms new. Oh, well the page isn't loading at all. That's why it won't find the CSS selector. Let's see what's happening. So it's expecting the end of a parentheses, but instead actually there should be a comma. It looks like I'm missing some commas in my HTML. So looking more at this page actually, let's take a look. It shows you exactly what line is giving you the error, which is very helpful, it's right there. And then you can actually go backwards in the code, especially if you're trying to find where a particular method is messing up. You can look backwards and see what is calling different things in different orders, so you need to see what's happening. And if there were any variables, you could check those out. Now, if you wanted to install binding of caller, you could actually use that right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit that out and go and take a look and fix this up. Gonna put my commas where they need to be. Commas will ruin your day. I think I need a shirt that says that. How many times is just a comma that you need to fix up your code? So binding of collar is something I don't usually use um, just because I like to use pry more and it serves basically the same function. So let's go ahead and run that spec again and it passes, hooray. As promised, here are some helpful links to the pry page, especially to the screencast page. There are a couple of really good videos there describing more functions and more features of pry. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed my real world examples. If you have any comments or questions, please be sure to leave a comment below. And of course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. A lot of folks have been doing that lately, so come on aboard. And if you are not already on my mailing list, please be sure to head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.